Welcome everyone to another Stop BS Now English podcast. Today I'll be dealing with William Golding's Lord of the Flies, commonly read in high schools, commonly used to torment students in high schools. Um, when I'm done with William, um, some of my students will contribute their own views on this widely disliked novel. Um, let's start with a review of a article published by Peter Conrad of The Guardian, uh, who was William Golding. Not the most pleasant man, it turns out. Um, apparently he hated his own novels as much as children do. Absurd and uninteresting, rubbish and dull is, that was his judgment concerning his own novel. Um, I have some different words for it, but those also apply. Um, Lord of the Flies went on to sell millions of copies. Doesn't say much about uh, our consumers of books. Introducing adolescents worldwide to the idea of original sin and the knowledge of their own barbarity. Well, speak for yourself. Our own barbarity. The barbarity of adolescents. Human nature doesn't get much purer than the nature of the adolescents. Uh, we seem to get more corrupt as we get older, more diseased, more unhealthy, mentally and physically. Um, original sin. There we go. There's the reference to the Catholic Church, the Catholic faith. Um, original sin being the concept that um, all humans are born sinful devils who need, desperately need, someone called Jesus to save them from their evil natures. What an uplifting view of mankind. What an easy way to simplify all our troubles and the solution for it. Uh, never mind dealing with politics, economics, agriculture, medicine, food. No, it's just faith, and you can solve it all with a little faith. Um, never mind what's up here in terms of our intellectual health. No, a bit of faith. Basically, I quote. William Goldling, I despise myself and I'm anxious not to be discovered, uncovered, detected, rumbled. I am anxious to have him buried again. Uh, why was he, why did he have so little self-esteem? How could he have any self-esteem as a, uh, what should we call him, fundamentalist Catholic? You're useless, you're evil, and only Jesus is good, and perhaps through you, uh, through him, you can be good, but in William's case, that didn't seem to work, uh, nor does it generally work very well. We get self-esteem from, um, dare I say, doing things that benefit people beyond ourselves, um, nature in general. Um, being physically and mentally active. Kneeling in a church somehow and praying for forgiveness, somehow that's not a good recipe for self-esteem. Golding called himself a monster, and deservedly so. I have actually some other names for him. Um, the question is, a man who... So honest about himself, 
Um, why do we read his works? Don't monsters produce monstrosities? They do, and his book is a monstrosity. Uh, as I hope to reveal, if it isn't already obvious, a little later. What kind of monster was he? A one who committed a sexual assault on a 15 year old girl. Disgusting. Um, what brought him to this point? Uh, somehow Jesus could not stop him. Um, somehow, this also reminds me of, excuse my perverted mind, the possibility that the pigs in Lord of the Flies also symbolize uh, girls and women. That was brought to my attention when I noticed one of the uh, slaughter scenes in which I think it was Jack who celebrated having jammed his spear up the rear end of a pig. Anal sex, anyone? Um, violent anal sex, disgusting stuff. Kerry, the biographer, documents Golding's ogre-like antics, but his reluctance to speculate about their origins. Well, William Golding would have pointed at original sin, but uh, it wasn't that simple. Maybe it had something to do with his Catholic faith, maybe his English culture, maybe his job. He was an English teacher. Poor students. His worst rampages occurred when he was drunk. And now I know our artists and authors and musicians have a predilection for uh, alcohol and other poisons. Most don't slide into violence. Most like good artists uh, and creative minds use their poisons to commit uh, a sort of suicide in slow motion. Hurting others is, is, is rare. Um, although strangely in this uh, recounted incident, he was violent towards a puppet of Bob Dylan. Don't know what to make of that. Um, the biographer, is tactful about Golding's relations with his children, both of whom suffered psychological upsets. Psychological upsets and due to possibly, excuse the lighting, that's uh, a mystery. Um, you know, this is what he did to his children. What did he do to his students? And what are his books doing to uh, readers, past, present, and future? Why do we assume that a man this deranged, uh, sociopathic, could produce a book worth reading by young people? Maybe by psychologists, but young people? I don't understand. Um, apparently his wife enjoyed uh, challenging him during uh, lectures. And apparently she once asked the why there aren't, aren't more women in his novels. I suppose like a good Catholic man, he didn't have much time for them. The self-contempt that Golding defined as the clue to his character yeah, helps us understand his works. I would say his Roman Catholic faith is a bigger clue uh, to interpreting a man like, oh, sorry, a book like Lord of the Flies. Uh, this writer, journalist that claims that William wrote some better things, I beg to differ. 
anyway, regarding the religious element in Golding's work, let's have a look at an article I noticed recently, excuse me. Um, let's see if I can bring this up on the share screen. I'm not such a whiz at this yet. Uh, there we go. What happened there? Good grief. There we go. If anyone was wondering where, what the inspiration was for the title, William Golding had the Bible in mind, every Christian's favorite book. Uh, Lord of the Flies apparently is uh, the translation of the name uh, or of the god Balzebub, otherwise known as Ekron. Lord of the Flies. Um, and I suppose that is also linked to Satan. It represents the devil. And as it turns out, the whole novel is littered with Christian symbols. Um, we might mention the frequent references to the beastie or the beast, uh, I believe, in the Bible's book of Revelations that is synonymous with the devil and Satan. Um, other symbols, uh, fire, I suppose, is a symbol for hell, but it's used in the story to produce light with which um, the children can be saved. Saved being a very Christian a word associated with spiritual um, salvation. Ralph, of course, hopes that his father will save them. The father is a Catholic symbol for God. Unfortunately, he, as well as all the other children, neglect to pray and, and neglect to practice their religion. Well, I say, unfortunately, but it's natural for children to forget to be religious when they're in a tropical paradise without adults. Who can blame them? Um, but unfortunately, the message of the book is that the children, and by extension, humans, can't live in peace without religion, specifically Christianity. Uh, this is uh, hinted at, at least, by the reference in the text to the, the children's clothing bearing crucifixes or crosses, hinting, which hints that the children came from a Christian school, not just the Christian world, um, England, but a Christian school. Now, all these symbols are, of course, rather subtle. There's no direct evidence that Golding wrote a religious book, a, a Catholic, Roman Catholic book. Uh, there's good reason for that. Such books are not popular. Catholicism is not popular in England. Uh, have a long history of oppressing, persecuting Catholics. So William Golding probably did well not to advertise the, uh, the Catholic nature of his novel. Now, many of our religiously ignorant uh, teachers um, like to interpret this novel as having some meaning, some moral, such as um, uh, we need laws in order to um, be peaceful. I don't see much evidence for that. Uh, Piggy does scream about it, but Piggy is hardly presented as a good character. He is guilty of at least four of the seven sins. Um, 
gluttony. Um, sloth, pride, anger or wrath. So can't say much good about him. Uh, not only does he eat a lot, this is emphasized in chapter one, but he seems quite keen to eat fruit. Fruit is another loaded word for Catholics and adherents of uh, the Bible. Fruit rep is related to the forbidden fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. And that was William's uh, intention too. Um, eating that fruit is sinful. The Catholic Church is uh, associates itself with quite different kinds of food, namely bread and wine, the food of the temperate world. Fruit. I suppose, especially in this story, is a tropical food. So, as Simon is giving food to the children, that is Simon leading the children into more sin, as Eve gave fruit to Adam and led him into sin. Um, but, of course, some teachers think Simon is somehow a Christ-like figure, Honestly, how could he be a Christ-like figure? In the Bible, uh, there is a Simon the Magician. So the name is already associated with uh, evil. Simon plucks the fruit and share, gives it to people. So he's repeating uh, Eve's behavior in the Garden of Eden. Um, Simon speaks to the... the decapitated pig's head stuck on a stick, like a bizarre parody of the crucifixion, which is what it no doubt meant to William Golding. Simon listens to that creature, becomes one with it, and delivers a falsehood, at least, viewed from a Catholic perspective, a falsehood to the children. He wished to tell them that the beast is just in their minds. Not so, say, fundamentalist Catholics. Satan is not just in your mind. He is out there. He really is. So we must be afraid, as we all are today. Except Satan's name now is uh, COVID-19. Yes, how history repeats. We have a new religion uh, and a new devil. As for Piggy, uh, well, we dealt with him already. Ralph, uh, the issue around him tends to be, is shouldn't he have remained leader? Didn't everything fall apart because he lost his leadership role. Uh, sorry, he never displays good leadership uh, ability. Um, and he became leader not because he had some special skill, but because Piggy happened to give him the conch. Uh, this is neither, that's not democracy. It's, uh, it's not the way tyranny works either. It's just uh, leadership by lottery, by chance. Um, all Ralph seems to know how to do is light fires. Uh, and in chapter was it one or two, uh, he was partly responsible for burning down part of the jungle, part of the island, and losing one of the children. Um, more importantly, as I mentioned earlier, he does not practice his faith. So he's a failure. Um, still, he might be the best child on the block. Mm. Although, one has to admit he was not kind towards Piggy. Not in the least. Now, 
we might discuss a little eschatology, the end times, Armageddon, this novel uh, kind of covers the whole um, eschatology or vision of Christian history or Christian vision of history with the fall, the fall from literally the airplane fell into the island, onto the island. And at the end, we have a giant fire, a conflagration, and symbolizing uh, the end times. Ralph is nearly killed, um, but at the very end, a man comes, an adult, possibly someone's father, uh, someone representing the Navy, like uh, Ralph's father. Although Ralph does not recognize this man, um, he comes to the rescue. He's there, I would dare say, like uh, the Messiah coming to the rescue of humanity. What will he do to the evil ones? And how will he bless the few chosen ones? Yeah, who will be chosen? Not the tanned and dark children. William Golding does a good job of, of, of associating dark tanned skin with his worst characters, as he does a as he overdoes uh, the opposite point in the first op well in the opening two pages. I think on uh, in some thirteen or perhaps a dozen times. He refers to Ralph as the fair boy, the fair haired boy. Why repeat that word? What, why is it so important? Well, it's a lovely word, isn't it? Fair, it's a uh, inherently racist word now that it means both good or just and pale, pale skin. As if to say, white people are also by definition, according to the dictionary, good people yes ralph the fair boy oh, i wasn't so fair to piggy but that was because he ate the fruit i suppose fell from the sky fell from grace um what other reasons do i have for placing the lord of the flies on my most disliked books list um it's anti well it's un-canadian it's anti-indigenous it's hostile to indigenous culture uh face painting dancing singing music drums all this is associated with the decline of the children into savagery. Um, no mention of the fact that Christianity and other religions have happily accompanied religious people into war, provoked people, uh, what's the word? Uh, sanctified religious wars somehow william goldening was not aware of that and perhaps last point uh should we not be horrified by the fact that the novel suggests that somehow being on a tropical island does not foster or provide the basis for our utopia. Somehow we need more than good food, good weather, fresh water, friends in abundance. Somehow we also need Christianity. Well, I don't doubt we need some sort of culture. Um, oh, 
perhaps um, we could all one day adopt a culture that does not whitewash and omit the real history of English people on islands. It is nothing like the story William Golding told. It is the story of genocide on Tasmania. And uh, well, genocide on uh, continents. There's no shortage of discussion of that, uh, knowledge of that. Uh, let me share a little, a few more links. Uh, here we go, something on the independent. Um, five of the worst atrocities carried out by the British Empire. This is no, not, this is not nearly a, a thorough list, let us say. The Boer concentration camps. Um, just before World War II, William Golding could have written about that. Somehow it did not interest him. Uh, perhaps he would have blamed it on the fall of the Catholic faith. Um, a massacre in Amritsar. I'm not even familiar with this one, and I am familiar with a good deal of history. Um, partitioning of India resulted in uh, uprooting over 10 million people. Well, never mind the uh, the Holocaust that occurred in India. I think it was prior to World War II. Uh, millions dying of starvation. The Mau Mau uprising. Uh, thousands of Kenyans uh, complaining about the concentration camps Britain had in Africa, um, where perhaps up to 100,000 died. And where do you think uh, the English speaking press got its idea of concentration camps in Poland? And, or perhaps a fairer question, a safer question would be where did Germany get its idea? for concentration camps. Uh, as researchers have already revealed, it also got its idea for uh, eugenics from the English speaking world, in this case, America. Famines in India, oh, I did mention that. Uh, we should also mention the, the uh, devastating famine in Persia caused by the British during, I believe, World War I, as it cut off supply routes. Um, and on the subject of destroying indigenous cultures and people, uh, England again has the, uh, well, leads all, uh, competitors in this field too. Um, Canada's residential schools weren't killing culture, they were killing Indians. This is a topic commonly discussed in can Canadian schools um, because we like to pat ourselves on the back thinking that uh, this horror is now over. Um, and indeed, to some extent it is, but uh, you can speak to our native people and it's hardly over. It has reverberations and uh, life without residential schools uh, isn't a whole lot better. Now you just get brainwashed instead of um, abused physically um, and intentionally stripped of your culture. Um, of course, schools still strip all of us of whatever culture we had or have, there's no time for culture anymore. Uh, anyway, none of this interested uh, William Golding, the truth about his own culture, uh, the truth about humanity and its history. Somehow, did not interest him, no. The monstrosity of our past, no, he wished to uh, imagine or stay focused on this imaginary monster, the devil. Anyway, I have spoken my fill. 
I hope to uh, hear from my students in a moment. We're joined now by Kevin, a grade eight student here in the greater Toronto area. Uh, he has had the pleasure of reading part of Lord of the Flies. I did not uh, insist that he finish it as I wish for my students to read fun books only, uh, or at least books that have some uh, useful uh, message. So Kevin, uh, share with us your own, uh, your own thoughts on this novel okay. by William Golding. So first I would like to bring up the topic of the author's attempted message of religion and why this is highly over-exaggerated by the author in the book. So after the boys land on the island, they stop practicing their re religion of Christianity and eventually they go savage without this religion. And so I think an underlying message of the author through this book's plot was that without religion, people are incomplete or they're like going to go insane or go savage. And I feel like this is much over exaggerated because there are many people in this world who don't practice religion or are atheists and they are perfectly fine. And I feel like this is just a fake message and it's not a good message to be sending through a book. I agree. It's uh, it divides people. There are people, of course, other faiths and and without faith. And uh, this novel is excluding them from the future, I suppose. Yeah, and it's also yeah, it's dividing people by religion. It's saying that Christianity is the superior religion, and yeah, I don't think it's going to be really beneficial for society to read those kind of messages from the book. It would only divide us even more than we already are. Okay. Um, what about the, uh, the, the novel's message that, um, you know, let's, let's ignore religion. Even if we, uh, if we do that, it, the novel's message is still that somehow humans can't be happy on a tropical island they'll always descend into savagery. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, that doesn't make sense to me either because um, the author puts this where since they are on an island, they turn into savages. And I feel like this is not a very true claim at all because there are people who can live like their entire lives on islands and have very happy, fulfilled lives on these islands. And they wouldn't go even the slightest bit insane. I agree. Um, it tends to be, uh, it was often Christians who brought unhappiness to island peoples. Uh, Christopher Columbus, for example. So, yeah, anything else? Um, another thing I feel like is wrong about this book is that it literally does not mention one girl in this book and it's literally only boys. I feel like that's kind of sexist because you're excluding girls from this novel. And even though females are like, make up a huge part of humanity, not one is mentioned in this novel. And yeah, that's um, sexist. And it is also maybe really ignorant of the author. Yeah, uh, apparently his own wife complained about that too. Oh. Yeah. Um, and his other books are not much better. It's mostly men. Um, so good. Anything else? Um, I think, well, another part in this book is racism. So a word that he often uses to describe characters with light skin is fair. And fair is a racist word in itself because it means both more morally right and just as well as light skinned and so it's not it's a very racist word because it's therefore claiming that light skinned people are fair and just and well you wouldn't need to have that word if every race was fair and just you wouldn't need to have a word that was only complimenting one race right yeah and also i feel like there's something wrong with hair here because um 
Rolf has black hair and it's seen as representative of his calm personality while Jack's red hair, it's always depicted as describing his fiery and bloodthirsty um, personality. And I feel like that shouldn't be a message that the author is giving out that people with red hair are like fiery and bloodthirsty. Right. Did, did you say that Ralph has black hair? Uh, yeah. Okay. I thought he had uh, light colored hair, but you might be right. Oh, uh, I don't remember. Do you think uh, the story communicates enough grief about the death of Simon and Peggy? Does it help us appreciate the value of life? I don't think it grieves in it enough. It doesn't put enough attention on it. They just move on. Yeah, I get, you know, in his defense, his, his aim was to show how people became uh, turned into monsters and so you know, savages. So he doesn't want to show anything good about people, but somehow I feel if he had tried to show people in a good light, he, he would have failed because he, he didn't know, I think from personal experience, uh, how to be good, how to be loving and caring. Uh, his biography uh, testifies to that. And since he doesn't know how to, he doesn't know how to write characters who know how to either. Yeah, anything else? Um, no, I think these were the main problems with Lord of the Fly. Other than the fact that the writing itself goes on a bit, and so it extends, and it's quite boring sometimes. Yeah, it's there's uh, quite a bit of unnecessary verbiage, uh, big words, uh, a lot of uh, metaphors and detailed descriptions of the uh, tropical environment. Yeah, the island, they had lots, they had way too much description on that. Yeah, and go ahead. Yeah, I feel like the book is losing the reader's attention when it does that. Yeah, I think his, his intent was to emphasize how dark and scary the forest is uh, and how life on this kind, in this kind of uh, environment prevents one from even thinking clearly. There, there are a few passages where, uh, I think it's Ralph, he, according to the narrator, he can't think well unless he has a clear path, like open spaces, no trees in the way, to, nothing to bump into. In fact, Simon violently bumps into a tree. And I think that does actual brain damage to him. Huh. I'm not kidding. Uh, I could pull out those passages, but uh, not right now. Um, and that partly explains why he ended up talking to that uh, rotting pig's head. As he was brain damaged yeah. by a tree. <laughs> he ran into a tree. Great book. <laughs> All right. I think. That could suffice. Any last words for William Golding? And or teachers who want him to be taught? William Golding sucks. His book <laughs> oh, right. is to your students by making them read it. Once more, that last a bit. A bit louder. Oh, okay. William Golding sucks. His book sucks. And everything about him sucks. So as well as it's very boring. So don't make your students read it. Don't torture them by doing that and don't read it yourself. Yeah, uh, good advice. Thank you, Kevin. Thank Talk you. to you later. Yep, bye. bye, -bye. Okay, there okay. you go. We're now joined by Ryan, a grade nine student also from the Toronto area. Um, Ryan did study this novel with uh, myself back in grade eight. Not sure why I uh, insisted that he read it or suggest that he read it. Ryan, do you remember your experience? Uh, it was interesting. 
uh, the book was mostly about religion, which I found uh, quite not understandable because I am not really a religious person. Right. Um, what if we strip away the uh, the religious symbolism? Is it enjoyable as an adventure story? Not really. Not as enjoyable as other adventure stories. No, and it's kind of depressing, I think. With, yeah. Uh, yeah. Children turning into monsters and killing each other. Mm -hmm. What a yeah, great, dude. great plot, really. Indeed. Um, so, yeah, tell us a little more about uh, the religious aspect, if you, if you wish. Okay, so the book is based around religion. And one of the most important aspects of this book is that people who do not uh, practice religion uh, will not survive. Uh, first of all, this is wrong because uh, religion, you don't need to pray to a deity in order to survive. You can just survive on your own with the necessary skills. Uh, in the book, uh, there are children. Uh, they are all they all have one sin that they are guilty of. Of uh, some who have or have multiple sins. Uh, in in the also in the Bible, fruit is considered bad. But in the book, children eat the fruit, and then they are plagued with diseases and illnesses. And all this relates too much to religion. Yeah. It's, uh, another it's... thing that I find quite offensive to children, especially, is that the author is suggesting that children cannot survive on their own without adults. And this is not entirely true because some children might have better, a uh, better mindset to survive on an island and they might lead a perfectly normal life. So I find that the author is being quite un unfair to children. I agree. Yeah. We underestimate how mature uh, our children can be. Uh, in many cases, uh, they make more sense to me than uh, adults. And there are plenty of children who, uh, whose lives are made worse by adults than it would be if perhaps they had fewer adults in their lives. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah. look at our world right now. It's, it's a world, uh, crazy world. And that's thanks to adults, not to children. Yeah. Uh, another part of the book was that the author was saying, was suggesting that tropical climates are evil and, and like uh, demonic like. Uh, and, and religion mostly exists in Europe, the modern developed cities. And religion is usually like sat uh, satanic or like killed in tropical climates uh, that are undeveloped or, or wild. Uh, this is, this is wrong because, because religion should not just only exist in developed cities. It can also exist in tropical climates. And the author is saying that tropical climates. Yeah, forest. Yeah. You know, it's, it starts with the first page when um, the narrator compares the cry or the song of a tropical bird to the to be to a witch's cry. Um, mm -hmm. The word witch is a very negative word from a uh, in a religious context, and that was the author's intent. So it's an it's an old bias against forest environments. Uh, I think our uh, William Golding was guilty as well of thinking that uh, you know cities and um, fields rather than forests are, what's the word, signs of uh, higher civilization. Mm -hmm. uh, in the book, there is a, there's a child named Simon. There's, there's a child named Simon who says the beast, which is um, a thing that the children do not know if it exists. And Simon says that it does not exist. It is only a figment of their imagination. But later in the book, Simon is killed. Uh, this is implying that people who oppose against Satan, who say that Satan does not exist, uh, will be punished. Right. Right. That explains why the, the narrator does not express any uh, grief. Mm -hmm. 
around Piggy's uh, death or, I'm oh, sorry, and, and Simon's death. Because he opposed the religion. Yeah, he doesn't deserve any, you know, proper burial or, or any, you know, expression of grief, not even from the narrator. Um, I'm not sure the, the author himself was capable of uh, grieving for children, uh, judging from his uh, shady past as a parent and as a adult convicted of uh, rape, raping a 15 year old girl. I'm not sure he had a uh, much of a heart for for anyone really. Yeah. So, any final words for anyone who uh, wishes to recommend or teach or read this book? Uh, this book should not be taken seriously because it doesn't make sense. Uh, the importance of religion is placed too much. Is placed. There's too much importance on religion. Yes. Um, and too little importance on. Uh, practical skills like how to build a home mm -hmm. uh, how to choose the best fruits for you the best diet for yourself um, how to entertain children how to raise children um, how to live in harmony with nature none of that seems to have interested him yeah yeah so the real world was secondary and all he cared about was his imaginary world Somehow that was supposed to be helpful. Um, I mean, somehow uh, re knowing your religion or practicing a religion is more useful than uh, living in harmony with nature. Yeah. It's just bizarre. And by nature, I mean living in harmony also with uh, your fellow human beings. Um, yeah, very disappointing and uh, not deserving of being read. Yeah, very. Okay, uh, if you were to uh, glue one word to that book, what would it be? Uh, evil. Yeah, <laughs> not worth reading. Yeah, I mean, the title almost says evil right now, but uh, it was meant to refer to the uh, the, the role of the devil in that in that novel, but the novel itself you're saying is evil. Yeah. yeah Indeed. Very. I much agree. Thank you, Ryan. Okay. We'll, we'll talk to you uh, in future shows. Okay. Take care. You too. Bye now. Bye.